One of the most powerful lessons I ever learned in my life was from a little eight-year-old boy at a camp. Two simple words you can live your entire life off of is be intentional. This young man had been severely abused and, and, and he treated other people in a very abusive manner. And it taught me the lesson of, of being proactive, of being intentional, of being, to, to go, to move, to grow. It's a very powerful, amazing story about the, the power of, of being intentional in your life. And I hope you enjoy this little clip. My wife and I met at a, a camp for special needs children and, and adults. It's, it's called the Clemson University Outdoor Lab. And, and one side of the camp is for mentally handicapped children and adults. The other side of the camp is uh, Camp Satoma. is for children with um, uh, financial disadvantage, children that are abused, uh, you know, hearing impaired, visually impaired. And it's, I mean, it's a wonderful camp, it's, you know, rec uh, recreation camp. And it's a typical camp that kids come in on Sunday. And then leave on Saturday. And, and of course, when the kids first get there, they're all kind of, you know, they're all kind of scared. Don't really know what's going on, you know. And you just, you know, you play kickball and kind of play around with them. And they loosen up and, and you have a great week. Well, it turned out one week uh, a kid came in and his name was Matthias. And I knew instantly, man, this is going to be tough. This is no ordinary kid. I mean, because instantly he was walking up to some other kid and just pounding him right in the face. Or, or walk up to some other kid and just go boom and kick him. I mean, within, within an hour, he'd already poked out several balls and threw a rock into a cabin. I mean, it, 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 I knew this was going to be a, a hard week. And, and I said, we never get rid of campers. But, uh, but I felt really sorry for, for whatever counselor had him in their cabin. It, it was going to be really tough. Well, it, of course, it turned out that you know, I, was his, I was his counselor. But, uh, but it turned out to be all day Sunday. And everybody's having a hard time because Matthew's just causing fights and, and, and causing a lot of troubles. And, and, and Monday rolls around. It's just kicking and fighting. And just, it just, he's just mean, hateful, just intentionally hateful, intentionally mean, intentionally causing trouble, you know? Well, so Tuesday comes around, and we have to go camping out. And nobody wants to be around Matthew, much less be outside in the woods with him. Uh, and so we, we hike out to where we've got to go, and, and, and we lay our little tents out on there and, and build our little fire and have our, have our dinner over the fire. And uh, we're just settling in to go to bed. And, uh, and Matthew does this craziest thing. As the kids are laying down, Matthew's walk up beside each, each side of the little boy and, uh, and walks up to him and says, hey, hey, Jimmy. And just kicks him really hard. And he says, hey, Jimmy, can, can I sleep beside you, please? You know, and of course, Jimmy says, no, you can't sleep beside me, man. You just kicked me. And so he walks up to Johnny. Hey, hey, Johnny. Mm, and just punches him really hard. Hey, Johnny, can I sleep beside you, please? And, and by that point, I was really getting frustrated. I mean, this kid was causing so much problem. And nobody was having any fun this week. And I was just about to lose it, you know. And so finally, I was, I was like, Matthias, for Pete's sake, if it means you being quiet, just come over here and just lay beside me. Put your sleeping bag right here for Pete's sake. Just I'm going to lose it in a second. So finally, Matthew's brought his little sleeping bag over to me and laid there beside me, and, and he got quiet. The first time we actually had peace and quiet all in a couple of days. And so he just laid there, and everybody was kind of calming down and, and just settling in. And, and, uh, and I guess about midnight or so, things were completely quiet. And I was just about to go to sleep. And, uh, and, and out of the corner of my eye, uh, I saw little Matthew just unzip his zipper on his sleeping bag. And I saw his little hands kind of reach out. And, and I know this is horrible for me to, to think this, but, but I thought for sure that Matthews had smuggled a butcher knife or something out, out of the cafeteria. And he was about to, you know, come along and just stab us all, you know. And so while I was under the, you know, I was in the, under, the, under, the, uh, under the sleeping bag, I was like a ninja, you know. I was, I was ready to go. But, um, but poor little Matthews, all he did was just reach over and just touch my chest, you know, and just, just touch my face. And then went back to sleep. And I was just, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was kind of like, still, what's going on here? And, and, and then one o'clock rolls around, you know, and, and Matthew's unzip a zipper and, and a sleeping bag and, and touched my chest and, and just touched my face. And, 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 and I was really kind of freaking me out for a second. About two o'clock rolls around again, just un, unzip a sleeping bag, unzip, un, unzip it and touch my chest and touch my face. And, and so finally I was like, Matthias, you know, why do you keep on touching me? Well, what are you doing? <coughs> Excuse up. Excuse me. And Matthew turns around and says, uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, I, I just keep having nightmares that, I, that I'm at home, and, and I just want to make sure you're real. I just want to make sure you're really there, you know. And he took my stab it in your heart. You know, he, he, I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, most of these kids were homesick to, you know, to be home, to go to home. And, and what kind of life had this kid had that, that he, his nightmares were to be at home? Now, this kid had no concept of love. This kid, and I finally kind of snapped in my mind realization that, I mean, everyone his entire life was intentionally mean, intentionally hateful, intentionally hurtful for this young man. And of course, he's just going to replay the same records and play it in him over and over and over again. And my heart just broke for this poor guy. 
And I sat there and just cried. Honest truth, I just sat there and just cried. Like, what kind of life have you lived to be in this much pain, to be causing this much pain on other people, you know? Well, listen, that was just a quick little snip, but, but I would love the opportunity to share the full story with you and see how this fits well with your group. Look forward to talking with you.